Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm Dan Cable Guy, thanks for joining me. So today's video is gonna be an updated video tour of the cinema room. The last video tour I did was back in February 2021 and there's been some big changes since then. Notably, changing out all of my Bowers and Wilkins bed layer speakers for Arundel sound and also adding the mini DSP for bass management. So the sound in here has never been better. Let's get into the video. If you do enjoy it, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So let's start with the basics of this room. As you can see it's not the biggest room in the world. This is a single UK garage so it's a converted garage space. It's only 2.2 meters wide. Behind the screen here is a double glazed window looking out into the street into the front drive. So we do still have the ability to use this as a day room if we need to but of course by using the remote here we have the ability to light control the majority of the room. There is still a small gap at the top of the screen there, which could be boxed in, but when the projector screen is down, that means we don't really have an issue with that. With the blackout screen down, we're now ready to actually fire up the room. And for this, we're using the Harmony Ultimate Remote and the Harmony Hub. So let's hit a sequence, which is Xbox in Cinema Room. So the LED lighting around the top of the room has now come on to give us a bit of ambience. If the lighting wasn't on, then the 10 spotlights would also have come on. And now the Epson projector is firing up. The amplifier would have switched on to the right inputs. And now the motorized screen drops down. So for basic automation, this does work quite well. And there we go. You'll see that there are compromises in this room. So behind me here, you've got the LCR, which I'll speak about in a moment, the left, center, and right channels. And of course, they are right up to the bottom of the projector screen. In an ideal world, it would be great to have an acoustically transparent screen that comes down or is fixed in front of the left, center, and right channels. But this is a, a compromise. A lot of rooms have to have compromises. One of mine is that I wanted better quality speakers, but it does mean that they have to sit below the projector screen itself. Let's talk about the front sound stage. So in here, we've got the Arundel 1723 Monitor S THX speakers for left, center, and right. So all three of them are 100% identical speakers, giving us excellent panning from left to right, right to left. And also as well, with them being of a very good quality, they do give very good detail when it comes to, for example, the vocals, uh, voices in movies, dynamic capability. So these have been a really nice upgrade to the front sound stage within the last few months. These subwoofers, which I've now mounted horizontally, purely to fit everything within the room here, the subwoofers are from Swedish brand XTZ, and these are the 12.17 edge power amp units. So these are the latest version of the 12.17 subwoofers. They are 12 inch subwoofers ported, and the amplifier I believe is about 800 watts per channel. So these are giving us the bass from the front end of the room. The drop down screen here is quite basic. It's quite a low cost screen from a company called Sapphire here in the UK. And it's a 16 by nine screen, 92 inches diagonally, and it uses the 12 volt trigger input to bring the screen down. So whenever the projector switches on, the 12 volt signal is sent and then the screen drops down. On the reverse, when you switch the system off, either through the remote or just power down the projector, the screen retracts back up into the housing. So everything is nice and discreet when it's not in use. So returning to the LCR, the left, center and right channels, these, as I mentioned, are the Arundel 1723 Monitor S THX speakers. The S stands for small because there is a larger version of these available as well. Unfortunately, again, with the height of the speakers, with the room that I've got, the full range 1723s wouldn't fit. They would have come over the bottom of the screen and it just wouldn't have been possible. So these are the Monitor S versions, which as I say, are a bit smaller. These use six and a half inch mid bass drivers, as well as the one inch dome tweeter, whereas the full 1723s use an eight inch driver. That would have been lovely, but again, you have to sometimes work with the room size that you've got. Due to the size of the room, the left and right channels 
can't quite go within the Dolby specifications. So the width or the separation between the left and right channels is a little bit narrower than it should be. But again, I've only got the physical space that I have to work with. So it's done as nice as possible, aimed at the main listening position to give as good a stereo image as possible. If we work from the front and keep working our way back, we've then got the top front channels. So top front left, top front right, and these are not r and I haven't had the chance to upgrade these yet. So these are Bowers & Wilkins CCM665 ceiling speakers. I installed these before I knew as much about Atmos, which was maybe around two years ago, and I actually mounted these facing straight down, which I now know is not the best option. It would have been better to have these angled at the main listening position, but that's just something where you live and learn. Uh, long term, I'd rather have some sort of bookshelf or dedicated height speakers for the top here and actually aim them at the main listening position. So as I say, that's the Bowers & Wilkins CCM665 as the front top height channels. Looking back into the room, you can see the main seating position here. It's only a two seat at home cinema because there is just about enough room for a second row here, but it's not really worth it. It's a very, very small room. So we have the two seater recliners here, which give us the main viewing position. To the left and right of us when we're seated, these are just behind ear level. And these are then the Arundel 1723 Surround S. So again, they're part of the S, the small range, which means they have a matching six and a half inch driver to match up with the front channels and the same tweeter. They are actually a triaxial design, so they do fire out of the sides of the speaker as well. You can have that enabled or disabled. For me, for the size of this room, I do actually run that as triaxial mode, which means it is giving that slight dispersion of the left and right of the speaker, but it does seem to work well for us here. I know that's not recommended for Atmos, but with the size of our room, that does really work well. So we do still run that. So again, left and right of us as our surround channels are the 1723 Surround S. And then behind us for the surround back channels, we have a pair of 1961 bookshelf speakers. So again, they're r and sound, all designed to match in and be tonally cohesive. But then you have the pair of bookshelf speakers in the far corners. These used to be further in in the room. I used to have the rear speakers mounted further in much narrower which was not ideal purely because of this doorway here there was nowhere really to mount the speakers so i've actually come up with my own bracket which is using a tv bracket just basically putting that together to give me the bookshelf speakers in a much better position so when you see the dolby recommendations these fit in quite well with the specifications for a dolby 7.1 system to finish off the main part of the speaker system, you then have another pair of the Bowers & Wilkins CCM665 in-ceiling speakers. These are actually angled slightly more at the main listening position. Again, when I first installed these, based on one of the Dolby images actually, I mounted them firing straight down. That's how I thought it should be done. I've obviously learned since that you should aim them at the main listening position. So since then, I've actually angled them in slightly to give them a bit more focus down onto the main listening position. Again, long term, I'd like to replace these with maybe another pair of the bookshelf speakers and actually have them angled in at the main listening position. Would give a slightly better dynamic response, but would also give a better immersive bubble. So again, that's the main speakers within this room. Here's just another look with the grills removed from the Arundel speakers. They really are incredibly well made and I've done a separate review video on these. So do feel free to check that out. The surround back channels don't use the same drivers. They are a slightly different range, but Arundel did design them to be slightly more budget friendly, but also to have very similar tonal characteristics to the main speakers. So far from the way I've had it set up in here, I would agree with that. The surrounds to the surround back do merge very well. They have a really cohesive sound to them. So again, I've been very, very impressed with that. Right in the back corner as well here, we do have a small office slash gaming area. So if I do want to do any live streaming or do any gaming content, I've then got this area at the back as well. Also hidden down here, right in the back is a pair of 10 inch 
Bowers and Wilkins subwoofers. I'll put some images of those up separately. These used to be active subwoofers. Unfortunately, the amp plates in both gave up after many years of use. So I converted them to passive subs using a separate power amplifier, which is mounted in the rack. So as I say, at the back of the room, we then got two 10 inch sealed subwoofers. So this is the main seating position. This is the MLP for me, right in the middle. And we've got these two seater recliners. They're not proper cinema chairs, but they are quite comfortable just in case you want to relax. I might have a nap. From my normal seating position, which is roughly like this, I still have line of sight to all of the surround channels. So I'm not blocking any sound with the back of the chair, which is great. My eye line is looking roughly at the bottom of the screen. So in an ideal world, of course, the screen would be a bit lower, but by the time you actually rest your head back, you are naturally looking slightly up. Again, this is one of the compromises to this room that I had to make. I've then got the LCR here. The tweeter is just below um, ear level. So again, that's not ideal, but again, it's a compromise. I've been so impressed with the upgrade in these speakers. I still think it's worth having that sacrifice to have the speakers a little bit lower, but I still get very good quality from them. Again, in an ideal world, I'd have the speakers a little bit higher, an acoustically transparent screen in front, and away we go. But it is what it is. At the bottom of the rack, we've got the Yamaha P5000S power amplifier. So that's powering the two Bowers & Wilkins ASW610 subs at the back of the room. Above that, you've got the Emotiva Basics A3. That's now powering the front, left, center, and right channels. Above that, you've got the Marantz SR7011 AVR. This is by far the best AVR that I've had so far. Paired with the Emotiva, that's taken things to another level as well. So really pleased with that. You've then got a thermostatically controlled fan system. That's dragging heat away from the Marantz AVR. Next is a CYP 4x6 matrix. So all of the HDMI inputs from the sources come into this matrix and then you can route those to different rooms, different zones. So this unit has two local HDMI outputs, one of which runs to the AVR, that's giving us the video and audio in the cinema room. And then it has four HD base T outputs. So basically outputs over cat cable. So you can then feed four additional zones up to around 60 meters away via cat cable to relevant receivers. So that is great, really nice for video switching and audio switching. And as I say, all of the sources go directly into this matrix. Next, we've got a slightly older and slightly damaged, the front flap is missing sadly, but that's a Panasonic Blu-ray player, the DMP BDT310. So it is a 3D capable Blu-ray player, it's quite old now. It's 1080p, the projector in here is only 1080p as well. So at the moment that's fine just as a Blu-ray source playback. So good to have for physical media. Next, we've got the Xbox One S and an old generation two Apple TV, I believe. We very rarely use Apple TV, almost never, in fact. Uh, the Xbox One S is pretty decent for streaming things like Netflix, YouTube, uh, other streaming services, but also, of course, I use that for gaming. So the Xbox One S gets a lot of use. You've then got a NAD CD player, which is the C545BEE. So if I want to listen to higher quality audio, then I will actually dig out a proper CD and have a proper listen. So that gets used just for occasional two channel listening, of course. Next up, we've got a dedicated DAC. That's the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic. So both the CD player and one of the Sonos units go directly into the DAC. So we're letting the DAC here, we're letting the DAC magic do all of the digital to analog conversion just to try and maintain the highest quality possible. On the right, you've got the Harmony Hub that's running with the Harmony Ultimate Remote Control. And at the back there, you've got a Zizel network switch. 
just to give us a bit more control over the switching side of things. And for audio, we've got a Sonos bridge just to give us the obviously the, the Wi-Fi capability. And then you've got the Sonos Connect, which is then feeding straight into this room. So again, if I want to listen to music through Sonos, that's then connecting in through the DAC Magic and then obviously through down to the AVR. The Harmony Ultimate gives us some simple automation. So for example, the 10 down lights in here, the LED down lights, I've programmed to use channel up and down buttons on the remote. So by using channel up and down, you can simply control the 10 down lights within the room. At the back of the room here is that simple office slash gaming area. So a very straightforward, low cost 22 inch LCD screen. Again, slightly better for gaming than using the projector if you're doing something like a first person shooter. And then there's a small audio converter in there to give us the microphone input uh, for streaming. So again, very simple setup, but just useful for gaming and also maybe using as a small home office. With this area here, we actually have the electronic consumer unit buried away in here for the electricals. So we had to keep some sort of open space here. So this is actually just basically a cover with storage behind it. But then this one, I made this into shelving for Blu-ray. In here, these are basically homemade acoustic panels. So it's a fabric over the top with basically an insulation in the middle. So again, to try and double this up, it was a big open space. We kept it with storage space here. These sort of homemade DIY acoustic panels. And then in here, as I say, you actually have the electronics consumer unit. So again, we're trying to utilize that space to still give us access to the consumer unit. And there we go, that brings us to the end of today's video tour. If you have any questions about the equipment or the room itself, do please feel free to put them in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer them. If you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.